I like Ryan Dover's Porsches, Lamborghinis, and Bugattis. That's a lot of cars. Who's buying them for you? Mommy. Oh. I never did that before, no. I don't even know what that is. Hello, where are you going? SJ! Hey guys, so welcome to my channel. Um, I just want everyone to know I have an incredible son. I am so blessed, like literally he is a really good boy. And so I wanna introduce you guys to him, which I've never done. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell. Don't have me in here talking to myself. I need y'all to be a part of this conversation right now. Let's go, I wanna know about your kids, but I'm about to tell you about mine. My son is pretty incredible. Eshe, what are you doing? Mm. Why don't you say hi to the people? Hi. A shy hi, say hi. Hi. Now it's hi, but let me tell you, in the house, nonstop, nonstop. Are you nonstop? Yeah, see the look? See what I have to deal with? You have no idea, but I'm about to introduce you. SJ, do you know how you got here on this in this world? Oh, mom's car. No, in my car? How did I, where, did, where were you at? In, your, in, your car. In, in my car? Where did you come out of? In, in my house. Where was the baby? Where do babies grow? From mommy's stomach. Oh, so were you in my stomach? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a really good delivery with you, you know that? I mean, it was hard. You know, you came early. You have a video? You wanna see it? Where I say, you're coming early, you wanna see it? Yeah. This is the day, the last day I was pregnant with you. The last picture mommy got. You see that belly? Who was in there? Me. Wow. Okay, now look, this is the day you were born. I'm talking to you before you were born. Your dad was there. So, I'm in labor, I guess. Sutton, say hi to the camera. Your son's gonna wanna see this. Katrina's here, of course, in the building. That was my doula, nurse. Yeah, I'm just, this is interesting. You don't put this down. You're coming very early, my son. You see? Isn't that cool? You don't remember none of it, huh? I highly doubt it. <laughs> Esha, you remember being born? What? How you remember? What happened when you were born? I need to hear this. Sit up. Oh. What happened when you were born? I came out mom's tummy. And then, then I came out. That was it? That's all you got for me? Yeah. Do you remember if you cried? Yeah. You cried? Who'd you see first? No, you were gonna say something else. Who'd you see when you came out the womb? The doctor? Ain't that scary? Like, you don't even see your parent first. You see like a stranger. So my, my labor story is unique because Eshe was due November 5th, which is his father's birthday. Um, and my birthday, September 18th. SJ decided to come September 22nd. So he came really early. And so the day he came, I didn't even know I was in labor. I was like, some water on my leg. And so he went to go get a haircut. I called my gyno. She's like, ah, just come by, I'm at the hospital. For some reason I had like a bag already packed. And so I took it with me. I'm not thinking I'm having the baby that day. I have a long time. I'm like, something weird's happening. I get there, they're like, you're three centimeters, you're having them today, tomorrow. Literally start crying, I'm like, I'm already. Because in my head, I had like another good, like two months to prep mentally. No, he's coming, you're three centimeters. Um, his dad's at uh, the barber shop, I'm calling him, he's nervous. My dad's calling me now, so I'm like, I'm nervous, go to the hospital. I'm getting all these calls, everyone's like worried. I'm out eating. Cause I know once you go to the hospital, you can't eat. So I'm having my little berry smoothie, croissant, potatoes, that was my go-to. Katrina um, pulls up, 
you know, she gets there before everyone. And the next thing you know, we're me, Katrina, and his dad are on the way to the hospital. It was quite an interesting pregnancy. I had a really good pregnancy, actually. Okay, pick it up, baby. I worked out the whole time. I really wasn't sick at all. I was in heels until probably delivery day. <laughs> I probably only gained like 20 pounds. And then after, it just came all off. Like it was like a really good pregnancy. Like I prefer delivery over pregnancy though. I always tell people like, being pregnant's cool, but I'm impatient. So I was like, yo, like how much longer? Like I used to talk to my son be like, yo, if you ready to come out, you good. I guess I kind of, you know, ignited that because he came out early. Okay, so SJ, uh, my son Sutton is actually premature. So when I was about to deliver, they were like, you know, we don't know if he's gonna be breathing right. We don't know if he's going to cry. We don't know if his lungs are developed. We don't know if everything is developed yet. Totally scary, by the way. I'm delivering a baby and I'm like, yo, like, I don't know what's really about to happen. I'm praying and I know, you know, I know the man above. So I'm like, God, hopefully everything's all right. He comes out screaming, but after he had to actually go into the premature like nursery, um, I actually had to stay in the hospital an extra like, almost a couple of like four days or five days. Luckily my hospital had like a hotel, so I stayed there, but that was quite an experience because he didn't get to just be in the bed like side next to me right after. So I had to, and that's actually why I ended up breastfeeding and formula because it was like, I needed to breastfeed him, but they also needed the formula. So it was kind of like, I just ended up going with the half and half. And then by six months, he stopped breastfeeding on his own. I was like, if you done, I'm done, say less. Cause this is a lot. And I did it with no medicine, all with no epidural. So that was Mommy, intense. Why Marjorie can't come? Poppy, Poppy. Not shh, you can talk, but about what we're talking about. He's somewhere else. I wanted it to do it with no medicine. That was my whole goal, and naturally, and so even in the hospital towards the end, stop, baby. Even in the hospital towards the end, the doctor was like, you know, you're not gonna get a prize for doing it, you can do it. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm gonna thug this out, because honestly, I didn't feel anything except for the last 30 minutes of my delivery, which was like, very intense, and at that point, I was like, I want out, I don't want to do it, take them out, I don't want to do it, but it was just worth it. Like, I didn't feel any contractions all the way up until they gave me Pitocin, which actually makes it more intense, and I didn't even want that, but since I was three centimeters for so long, they were like, listen, we gotta give you something to speed it up, and I'm like, no, that's the stuff I heard makes you need an epidural, but I did it, they gave me a very little bit, and SJ's father, Sutton, was there, um, I had a doula, which was amazing. So every time I had my contraction, she's pushing my back, she's fanning me, I'm eating nice. Like everything I needed to do, I had my, my music on. I thought I had a push song, but by the time it was time to push, I'm like, I don't want to hear nothing. I just want to push this baby out. Um, so yeah, his, my doula, Katrina, which you guys met on uh, one of the episodes, <laughs> was there, um, that's it. Three pushes and he was here on earth, thank God, and everything was good. And he was still 5.5 ounces for a baby that's early. So imagine if he are waited. Are you in Miami? No, we were not. We were in New York. You are a New York baby. You were born in Manhattan, September 22nd, 2016. Boom, and now look at this big monster, he's huge. And my mom and dad were on the way, but they didn't make it. By the time they got there, he was out. They thought I was gonna be there all day. They were like, did you just have a baby? Cause you don't look like it. I mean, they came in and I was just like, hey guys. They were like, why do you have this much energy? How are you up? But I mean, I had so much adrenaline after I had him that I was just up to like four in the morning. It was crazy. So this is SJ. SJ likes cooking, right? Yeah. What's your favorite thing to cook? Waffles. You don't make that by yourself. What's the thing you normally make on your own? The smoothie? The smoothie. Would you guys want to see Esha and I cooking in the kitchen? Esha, do you want to cook with me? Yeah. But what are we going to cook for them? French fries and... We're not making french fries and chicken, I'm vegan. You want to be a vegan? <laughs> okay, uh, another fun fact is SJ is bilingual, right? You speak, yeah. what language did you speak? English. And? Spanish. Yep. Can you speak to them in Spanish for a little while? Because I don't know how to speak to them. You know, since you're bilingual, you got to give the people what they want. Perito y gato. 
You talking about cats? You think I don't know what you said? Maybe if you go on that side and you speak to him in Spanish, it'll help. Yellow. Mm -hmm. Amarillo. School. Escuela. My friend Jay. Mi amigo Jay. So he calls me and it's like, he's like, I'm in work, I'm at work. He's like, it's 70 degrees in Miami. I'm like, and? He's like, oh, there's a party in Miami. I'm like, what party? He said, it says party cloud. Partly cloudy, I fell out. Like what? It's partly cloudy, but there's a party in Miami. But, um, I mean, he's just very funny. I mean, it's crazy because he can, he writes, he can read. I know everyone feels like their kid is really smart, but Eshe is very advanced, well beyond his times, and he's really playing me and you right now because he's not even trying to participate. He loves cars. Since he was like six months, he's loved cars. And so what's your favorite car? Tell them one. I like Range Rovers, Porsches, Lamborghinis, and Bugattis. That's a lot of cars. Who's buying them for you? Mommy. Oh. Where am I going to get the money from? From work. Oh, from work. You know how much a Bugatti costs? How much? Ten dollars and a zillion dollars. <laughs> ten zillion dollars or ten dollars? Ten dollars. Really? Mm, did you tell them the new activity that you want to get into? Race school. Yes, you're gonna go to race school? So are you gonna tell them about it? What are you gonna learn there? Cars. But how are you, what are you gonna learn there? Are you gonna learn how to? Gonna learn how to drive. He's gonna go to race school. So he's interested in cars to the point where I think we're gonna put him in race school. Okay, so moms, like do any of you, you guys' sons like over love cars? I mean, he knows, makes, models, how old it is. We'll pass it back. That's an old Range Rover. That's a new one. That's a sport. That's this. That's a Ferrari. Mommy, did you see the Bugatti pet? Like he knows everything. Does anyone else's son, can you relate to that? Cause I'm like, he's obsessed with cars. My son, like he also is very like, he likes his stuff in a certain order. He's like very detailed. Am I the only one? I mean, I know his father was very detailed, so maybe it comes from that side, like detail-oriented colors, where he knows where his stuff is at. Like he's very serious about it. Anyone else in that whole world of a win? Wind of a world, world of a win. I don't even really know what I'm saying sometimes. Um, so SJ is definitely a very large mixture of myself and his dad, and anyone who knows his dad knows that he was a very big personality, one of one, um, super cool in his own right. So SJ is definitely becoming this cool kid who knows about all of the cars. He speaks Spanish, he speaks English, he's like, He's a lot, he is definitely a lot. I feel like in front of the camera, he's not fully unshelled because he's a little shy, but once he opens up, I'm telling you. I mean, you guys see the stuff I share with you guys on social media, that's SJ. Like right now, he was like, I don't know about you guys yet. But once he opens up, forget about it. So SJ's fashion sense, some, I mean, sometimes he trusts me with what he's going to wear, but most of the time he's like, I'm laying my outfit out. This is what I'm wearing. I mean, he likes a little bit of everything. Sneakers, clothing. Sometimes he wears some crazy stuff, but for the most part, I think he gets it. That's the cool part, and I think Eshe gets it. Woo, he's a lot. You ever have your kid at work with you and you just feel like it's, it's a lot? But I love him, I really do. He's a great kid. He's just a handful. I think, I feel like as a mom, A, I never expected to be raising my son alone which is tough and it's not like I'm in a position where his father's even here. So I just feel like the responsibility load is much more than what I even could have expected. I mean, you go half on a baby with somebody to be half and half or at least have that other parent present. So that has been quite an experience and a journey for me. I mean, even when it comes to work, having to drop everything and not being able to call his father, but having to lean on my family, which is great, but you don't have a baby with somebody to go and have to just only raise them with the family, which that put me in a different position, I feel like, with raising my son, um, because you want him to have the best. And for me, it's like, geez, like he has so much to learn that I cannot give him. I can give him mom all day. I can be tough on him, 
but I can't teach him how to be a, a man. You know, and that to me is the hardest part. I think as a boy mom, I had to learn, you know, first of all, how to teach a boy how to pee, because I don't pee the same way a boy or a male would. His godfather, thankfully, was there, so that was something that was interesting. Um, haircuts, <laughs> being present for that. I still don't know everything. The numbers, the, let me get a one, a two, a three. I don't, can it just look nice? I've always been one to say, I'm just gonna figure it out as I go, which is what I do. You know, I think that if you don't just take a step, you'll be stuck just sitting there looking. So it's like one of those things when you have kids, you can't really be prepared because you don't know the child you're gonna have. You don't know the personality, you don't know. You know, there's a step-by-step -step manual of how to change a diaper, sure, but like everything else in between that may happen, the child throwing up, you know, like so much happens from beginning to the end, you know what I mean? That you cannot be prepared for. You don't know what you're walking into. So I feel like my mom, my stepmom, my parents have been really great at like giving me advice. So that's helpful, like if I need it, but like I always loved like children, even when I was younger and I loved playing with dolls and stuff. So I kind of walked into it naturally. Like I, I, being a mom is kind of like first nature for me. Like it's just like, I just, I know how to do it instinctually. I think mothers don't realize the amount of time that they need for themselves. I feel like self-care has to be at an all-time high. Like if you were taking care of yourself on a 10 before a kid, it needed to be on a 20 because you forget yourself almost, right? In the midst of raising a, a kid. And I, I've i been really always good at like looking out for myself, like whatever that looks like. So. I always tell other mothers like, yo, you have to have that. You have to have someone to lean on. You need that or you're gonna run yourself dry. So I just feel like as a mom, the preparation it takes to actually raise a kid, if you're not happy internally, I just feel like you're never going to be able to raise that child with the right, like they get it, like, I, like they, with the right joy because I feel like kids just get it. Like they know when you're not happy, they know when things are not good in the household. So it's so important to like, really take time to figure out what it is you want to do and go for it. You know, I make time for that. I make sure I'm still doing the Angela things and not just the mommy things because mommy takes up everything, you know, like it's your day to day life. If you're good, you'll be able to take care of your kid to the in the right way. When I'm not in a good space and you're wondering why your kids bugging, they're doing the most because they're picking up your energy, you know, and I just feel like it's really important to channel the right energy. My question to you guys is, um, how are you taking care of yourself on top of being a mother? You know, like what are your day-to-day self-care routines? What, how are you getting away? What are you doing? Are you meditating? Are you praying? Like, what's your day-to-day -day look like? Everyone says, I don't have time. No, what do you make time for in your life alongside being a mom? You know, I really want to know what you're doing. And if the answer is nothing, I feel like you really need to start now. Guys, I really love being a boy mom. Make sure you subscribe. Listen, I gotta go. I gotta get back to being a mom because he's calling. I'm coming.